Hi guys, welcome back to Lennox Bennett channel as we look at another part three of the paper. Let's go. Let's hopefully we can get to 40 to 60. If you have not watched part one and part two, you need to go back and do so now. All right, so let's go. It says item 40 to 41 refer to the following diagram. Show the cumulative frequency curve based on the marks of 200 students who obtained who took a driving test. The median score by the 200 students is, now the median is the middle. So what we have to do, middle it, let's middle it and see if we can figure out what's the median mark here. All right, so it's so the there one here. So let me see if I can figure it out from here. So it's about here. Now we're going up by 10. 15, so we're going up by 5 really, so this will be 35, okay, 37, okay, so here we have 37.5, so I'm going to go with that, um, it says the highest mark scored in the test was, so the highest mark, let's see where the curve, all right, and that will be 60 marks, We say in a box, there are eight red, seven blue, and six green marbles. One marble is picked up randomly. What is the probability that is neither a blue nor a green? So if it's neither a blue nor a green, that means it has to be the probability of picking a red, right? I will try chicken, guys, but that's definitely. So how many reds are there? Eight. And let's see what's the total. So we have eight and seven, 15 plus six, 21. So that would be A. Item 42 refer to the following pie chart, which shows the popular games played by 720 students. So we have cricket. We don't know how many play cricket. We know that 90 degrees play basketball. No, football. 30% play basketball and 36 plays tennis. So they want to know how many students played cricket. All right, I'm going to go the degrees way since as we have this already. So this is 90 degrees. So we need to figure out what degrees go here. So that's 30% of 360, right? Because remember, the circle measures 360 degrees. So not worry about that. Boom, 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 boom. 3 times 36, 36 is 18, 8 carry 1, 3, 3 is 9, and 1, 10. So this is 108 degrees. So what we know now, we can figure out how many degrees goes here by adding up all of this and subtracting from the 360. That will represent the cricket in terms of degrees. So we have the 90 plus the 108 plus the 36. I think this is a long route, you know, but Sometimes I just feel like that. So 90 plus that 198, yeah, yeah, 198 plus 36, 234, plus 2 I'll go up on it, yeah. All right, so in terms of the degrees for the, well, we have to just subtract this from 360. If you like button, if you have not done so, if you want to join my online class, 5492161. All right, four from that we can't. So boom, we'll borrow one from this leaf five. This leaf six. Three from five leaf two. So this is 126. But remember, the total is 720. So it would be 126 over 360. times 720 all right so boom you can see this into this one this into this two so two times 126 that's 252 so the number of persons who play cricket would be 252 let's proceed to the next part it's an item 44 for the following two-way table 
which shows a model of transportation to school on a particular day for a group of 200 students. A male student is picked at random from the group. What is the probability that it doesn't that he does not walk. So basically, put my exode walk. So if you know walk, you take taxi, right? Or bus. And it's a male, so we go in this direction. Right? Notice this is a bus, female, female and male. So this is only male, right? And of course, that would be 30 plus 50, 80. If you take that, and it's a total of 108. What could we use to reduce 80 over 108? Four could use, right? Four into this, 20. Four into 10, two times remainder, two. But our four sevens, 28, so it's 20 over 27. The point where a linear function crosses the horizontal axis, notice it's not the x axis, right? It's the horizontal axis, which is the x axis. So that's not the y intercept, that would be the x intercept, where it crosses the x axis. Normally, something like this. All right. The equation of the line which passes through the point 0, 5 and has a gradient of 4 is. So if you have a gradient of four, so it's y equal mx plus c. Now they give us the gradient. Once you give us the gradient and the y-intercept, you can figure it out, right? So the gradient of four, so this is four, and it passes at zero, five. So that means you cut the x-axis at five. So that's c. All right, let's look on, move on to 47. Which of the following graph represent a linear function? Let's look at all of them, guys. And that would be A. All right. 48 refer to the following graph of a quadratic function. The, the coordinates of the points of function y equal that are the coordinates of the turning point of the function y equal 4x minus x squared. So this would be the turning point, and that's the highest point on the graph, 2, 4. Remember, we have to read our x first for our y. So x is 2, y is 4. Forty-nine. A line L is parallel to the line three x minus seven y minus nine is equal to zero. What is the gradient of L? So, guys, if they are parallel, it means that they have the same gradient. So, let us solve for y. So, we're gonna get rid of this first. Not necessarily this first, either, but yeah. So, it's gonna be minus three x. The nine not no relative, guys. So we're gonna add nine. And then now we're going to live with negative 7y. And of course, we're going to divide by negative 7. So we can get y by itself. So see here, it's in the form now. Negative will cancel negative. So the gradient will be 3 over 7. Both of them have the same gradient if they are parallel. 50 says if g of x is equal to 7x minus 3 over 5, then g negative 6. So this is a function, and all we're going to be doing is to put negative 6 where x is. Seven times six, negative 42, minus three over five, which is negative 45 over five. 
which gives us negative nine. All right, so that would be E. Item 51 refer to the following arrow diagram which shows a function. We shall the following best describe the function. Is it y is equal to x plus three? If you look at all of them, I'm gonna totally agree with that. Um, to get the value of y, I will do a three to the previous x, right? So two plus three, that's five, five plus three, eight plus three, and 11. So that we don't need to go any further. Let's move up to 52. The range of x to the cube for the domain negative 2. Now, if we cube negative 2, we're going to end up with negative 8. Once it's an odd number, we're going to end up with that. All right. And of course, 2 cube will give us. So we just need the endpoints, right? So that would be d. All right. 53. What transformation maps pq? R and to P that, all right? And that's a reflection. Once you see it facing it, each other like that, guys, you know that it's a reflection. Mirror point would be about, so mirror about there about. Each point is equal distance from the mirror line. In which of the following polygon does the sum of the measure of the interior angles equal to the measure of the exterior angles? So all the exterior angles must add up to 360, so that will be a quadrilateral. Because a quadrilateral, all the internal angles add up to 360. So that's a very nice one, CXC. 55, item 55, to the following diagram in the line y is equal to x. So this is the line y equal x. What image of the line y equal x when it's rotated anti-clockwise? About the origin to a 90 degrees. So it's going to look something like this now. And that would be the line y equal negative x. Where are we now? 56. Item 56 refer to the following diagram of a translation. In the diagram, the translation by which a b map onto a prime b is represented by. So, guys, you can just use one point to find the translation. So, we have point a. And we have a prime. So let us investigate. So we have 2 and 5. We end up with 4 here and 6. What did they do with the 2 to get 4? You could add 2, right? Yeah. And then you add 1 here. So, so it's 2, 1. Let's move on to 57. Item 57 refers to the following right angle triangle ABC. In the triangle ABC is BAC is 30 degrees and AB 40 the length BC in meters. So we want to find BC. So we're going to look at what the opposite. And we are given the hypotenuse. So that was the sin. Or two of them are sin, you know, well, uh, oops, or it, it was the sin 30 degrees equal to the opposite, which is BC, upon the hypotenuse, which is 40. So then we do a little thing with cross multiply, so it would be sin 30 times the 40. So that's E. Let's move on to 58. O, E, that, that, that straight map onto that, that by an enlargement is center. O, what is the scale factor of the enlargement? What's important, guys, which one of them is the original? So that's what I'm looking for now. And that's O, E. So this the small one map onto the big one. So that's very important. So we can get the scale factor by the size. All right, so this is two. This is one, this is two. So we can see the increase it by two. This is also, this is two, this is four. So the scale factor would be two. So that's C. A plane is fine and direction of 45 degrees and changes course at a clockwise direction 
135. The angle to which the plane turn is, and that's 135 minus 45, which gives us 90 degrees. 60, and last, in triangle PQR, angle P is equal to X, angle Q is equal to that. What is the size of angle R? And that would be 180. All three angles add up to 180. So all we have to do is just add these, and we get our answer. So it will be 180 minus 3x. I you add the like terms, so that will be E. So want to be a part of my online class, guys, it doesn't matter which country you are from, whether Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, Barbados, this is my number, Belize, St. Martin, speak up the whole Caribbean. All right, thank you guys so much for supporting Mr. Benny. You guys are appreciated. So just one tap me at 549-2161. The next minute I'm out, good out. I'll see you guys in another. Oh, like the video if you have not liked the video, guys. Don't deal with man.